All right. Uh, I'm not sure how to actually start this because it's been like five years since I've done this, but uh, I guess we'll just shoot it, right? Absolutely. We'll Uh, edit and post, right? Yeah, edit and post. Welcome to the Brotherhood Entertainment Podcast. Foreclosure, we were going to use a different name, but DJ from New York, go fuck yourself because you stole our name. Um, (laughs) But I am your co-host, Lakota Carter. I am sitting here with my boy, Cody. Uh, this is going to be our weekly podcast. Don't sure, not exactly sure when it's going to be up every week, but we'll figure it out then. But go ahead and lead us into our topics, man. Yeah, what, what's up, man? Uh, I coming out swinging at uh, at another podcast right out of the gates. I like it. It's a uh, it's aggressive, Actually. but you know anything can happen in the World Wrestling Federation, right? Yeah. So yeah, um, yeah. So I, I think, like you said, we'll probably do like a weekly rundown, uh, give our thoughts, maybe on occasion go back and watch like a like a previous um i don't want to say classic because that sounds like it's from the golden era but maybe watch like a, a pay-per-view from the past and do like a play-by-play or do our uh i know that's kind of your thing right like do you want to talk about that um you know your uh kind of goal of getting into commentary would that so, be a good uh absolutely that's a perfect start because i feel like a lot of this is a fresh start for everybody even though if you've been here for a while um So back in 2017, I met Jim Ross at a West Virginia Powers game, which is the major, not major league, but minor league baseball team here in West Virginia. Nice. And I kind of, I always knew growing up with cerebral palsy, like there's some stuff that you're just not going to be able to do. But I was always gifted at talking. Like I could, like Punk taught me that very well. Punk taught me that get a microphone and, and shoot the shit. And I was yep. always good at that. And I remember looking at Jim Ross and telling him, you know, I think I might want to be a commentator. And the, the word that changed my life was, somebody's got to do it. Why not you? And so oh, yeah. I have Jim Ross to thank for that, even though he's kind of off the rails. Very, very hopeful that his health gets back up to 100% yeah. because yep. he is an absolute icon. But, yeah, that's going to be my future career. I'm actually looking into going to Full Sail University and everything for it. So can't wait Hell for yeah, that. Man. How how far out is that for? Like, are you thinking like um, it's G- so, uh, February when we're recording this? Is is that like yeah. a this fall kind of thing? Is so that a, it'll probably be school? about a year because, like okay. I said, my girlfriend still has to finish school here, and then I'll probably have to move out there. Um, sure. Because I I do want to do some online school, but not all. Um, yeah. So and it's like a thirteen and a half hour drive from here mm. to Florida, and so. I'm just going to have to move down there if I want to make my dream possible. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Sure. I mean, that's a, that's a hell of a, a place to go. I mean, they have a lot of ties with, I mean, I don't know if they're still doing it, but I think for a long time, like NXT was at full sale, right? I yeah, don't know they, if that's still the case. From like 20, I want to say like 2014 to 2021, they ran okay. out of full sale. Sure. Somewhere around there. And yeah, now probably maybe. Here. Maybe COVID change that, but yeah. Well, they're running out of the PC now, which is a smarter move for them. They don't really sure. have to move the equipment or anything. So, gotcha. you know, it's it's already tied. It's got roots deep down in NXT, uh, which I do want to talk about eventually. Um, but yeah, man, I can't wait. That's awesome, man. Cool. Well, uh, yeah. Hopefully, the podcast will keep going, and uh, we can follow along with your journey. Absolutely. I'm pulling for you. I'm sure everybody else is too. So. Cool. All right. Uh, should we run into or should we hop into the results from uh, Monday Night Raw on February 5th, 2024? Absolutely. Let's go. All right. So we start. Show starts with a burn it down. Seth freaking Rollins comes out. He cuts a promo. He calls out Cody Rhodes and he says, Cody. Who are you picking? You picking me? You going for the head of the table? Cody Rhodes comes out, says, "St. Louis, what do you want to talk about?" Um, they uh, it sets up like uh, Cody's gonna give an answer, and then yeah. Drew McIntyre's music hits. Drew comes out. He tries to convince Cody. You know what? You need to finish your story. Drew is suddenly playing babyface, but he's got ulterior motives. He's trying to convince Cody to go after Roman so that he can go for Seth Rollins. Uh, it ends in a physical calamity where uh, 
Drew McIntyre hits Rollins with a Scottish kiss, I think is the term for the headbutt. Yep. And uh, Cody throws uh, McIntyre through the middle ropes, and there's a lot of stare downs happening. So, Lakota, go ahead, hit us with your thoughts. As that has been the thing all week, right? The big stare downs. That's what we've been leading into for WrestleMania, yep. which, hey, I'm here for, man. You don't, for me, the best storytelling is when you don't say anything at all. You let your actions and you let the people in the audience tell a story for you. And that is exactly what WWE has done. I told you this past week that I am a huge AEW guy. I love AEW. But the fact that WWE is up here right now and AEW is down here is blowing yep. my mind. Like, yep. is blowing my mind because WWE is so accustomed to disappointing us after disappointment after disappointment. And honestly, they haven't disappointed me one bit leading up to WrestleMania this year. Other than with Drew McIntyre. Here's my problem with Drew McIntyre. From week to week, the dude is a dominant monster, as he should be booked. But when you go out there and you have ulterior motives, it's just another way to fish him in there because punks hurt. Let's be honest. That was not the plan to begin with. The plan was to have Punk win the Elimination Chamber in Perth, Australia, go on to fight Rollins. That was the plan. Now they're like, oh, shit, what do we do now? Well, let's just throw Drew in there for a minute. And are we just going to forget about Sami Zayn? Like, is that what what we're supposed to do? I know he had a qualifying match, I believe. Was it this past Monday? Uh, It was was, was on SmackDown. uh, That's that's a bit of of foreshadowing. We'll We'll, we'll get there. We'll we'll get there. But what I'm hoping it leads to, if you have to put Drew in a world title match – I love Drew McIntyre. I think he's great. He's not as good as he once was. He's not entertaining. He gets on my nerves. And maybe it's just the little punk fanboy in me, you know, that he ruined CM Punk's WrestleMania dreams. But I just – I don't see him as a main event player anymore, man. And it could just be me. But, like, I feel like his moment passed two years ago. And unless they do a triple threat with him, Sammy, and Rollins and have Sammy win the title at Mania, this story's pointless. Hmm. Yeah, I think um, – so I, I've been watching with my wife, uh, and my, my mm-hmm. wife has never watched wrestling. Um, but actually, a bit of backstory on this podcast. You and I did not know each other until, what, about three weeks ago? Uh, we met ago. each other. We met each other at um, a um, Friday Night SmackDown watch party prior to the main – or prior to the Royal Rumble in mm-hmm. uh, Tampa, Florida. Neither of us are from Tampa. No. You're from West Virginia. I'm from uh, somewhere in the Midwest that I'm, you you know, but I don't necessarily want to put up there for all the listeners. No. Um, but uh, yeah. So um, yeah. Anyway, uh, my wife has been watching with me since then, um, but it's given me like a complete outsider's perspective on, you know, like she doesn't know the backstory and there's been a lot of things that I've had to stop and explain. And um, you know, but one thing from her perspective is like Drew is this giant brooding, like, like to, to her, it's, it's real. Like, well, this guy's twice the size of these other guys. And he does this kick where he kicks the other guy's freaking head off his shoulders, mm-hmm. you know? And I, like, I think to the common fan or the casual fan, I really see how they're like setting Drew up. Cause he's been like really physically opposing. Um, he cut a promo and I don't remember, I think it was this week um, when Cody and Seth were, were doing a stare down, but Drew has like a t-shirt on that's got a gravestone and it's a CM Punk's WrestleMania main event. I know that you said you're a CM Punk fanboy. I, I love Punk too. Um, but, you know, Drew made a comment in there that uh, he said he had Seth's extra small in the back, you know, like it, it is really true. Like Seth isn't a small guy, but compared to Drew, damn. Like Drew is pretty physically imposing. So I, I feel like the setup, even before Punk got hurt, uh, they were rubbing Drew up against Punk quite a bit. Um, it seemed like Punk was gonna, you know, take uh take the the I forget the term for Seth's title, is it the World Heavyweight Championship? Yeah, yep. the one Seth has. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, it seemed like seemed like to me the setup was that, you know, Drew or Rollins was gonna lose that to Punk at Mania. And then, uh, you know, Drew is kind of rubbing up against Punk to get a future shot at that. So 
I I got to think that going into it, Drew is the favorite to win the Elimination Chamber and go face Rollins. Whether or not he wins, I don't know. Uh, I, I think, you know, I could see Rollins holding it till SummerSlam and then going up against Punk and doing the handoff there. Or maybe Drew could be the transitional champion. But I I really think that, you know, Drew is the heavy favorite at this point to, to face Seth that mania. What do you think? I mean, yeah, that's that's a good assumption, but the way that I would book it, and it's something that we've never seen, what if, like, the last two were Sami Zayn and Andrew McIntyre, and something happens where they both pin each other at the same time? And then you could also put – because Sami has been in this story from the beginning. If you go back yep. to his match on Raw a few months ago with Rollins, that was an absolute show stealer, by the way. This dude has been in the back of Seth Rollins' mind for months. And so I feel like if you don't establish him, and I'm not just saying it because I'm a Sami Zayn fanboy. I'm really not. But if you don't put him in this, I think those people that love Sami Zayn because he's probably one of the most over people in the company. He got number 30 in the Rumble for a reason. Sure. If you don't put him in this match, what the hell does he do? Yeah. Yeah. I, so, I hear you. I think it'll make a lot you. of people mad. I think it'll make a lot of people upset. Kind of like something that we're else going to get into that everybody else did not listen to me. But now that it happened, everybody's like, oh, this is great. Can't wait to get into that. Um, but just be patient. We'll find out what happens. You're, you're probably right. Drew's probably going to win. Um, I don't want to see it. I don't think Drew McIntyre yeah. needs a WrestleMania main event. I think his WrestleMania main event passed him two years ago. It's sure. just me. But sure. you're probably right yeah. because that's the easy way out. I think, uh, yeah, I, I think there's a lot of guys that have that potential to, you know, I don't want to say be the face of the company, but, you know, like Seth's championship would be a good a good spot for them. Like you mentioned, Sammy, I totally agree with that. Um, Kevin Owens, Finn Balor, like Finn Balor, I feel like, I feel like he's not even the leader of the Judgment Day. You know, it's kind of like he's yeah, taking orders. Um, yeah, I, I yeah, I, 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 I want them to see. I want to see them do a lot more with a lot more people. I know that you know there's only so many WrestleMania main events. I mean, there's technically two because there's two nights of WrestleMania. Until a couple of years ago, there's only been one main event, and uh, yeah, it's hard Which to. I prefer, I mean, by the way. Yeah. And I mean, like, you know, to this day, CM Punk's never had a WrestleMania main event. I mean, he's had, and he had, crazy. he had that, he had that match against The Undertaker, which I, I would count as a main event. But if you say there's only one last match, you know, but I, but it, I, it, it's weird how you define that too, because technically, technically, Rock versus Hulk Hogan was not the main event. That was Triple H versus Jericho. You know, yeah, that it was another stupid booking decision from an out of touch yeah. 70 year old man. Yeah, and it, and at the time, uh, both both Triple H and Jericho were uh, were arguing that Rock Hogan should be the main event. So yeah. I mean, ho hopefully, hopefully going forward, you know, there's a lot of things that you know that, and we'll we'll get into it a little bit more with the the booking and the setups for things. Uh, I mean, this is the first time really in my lifetime, you know, going all the way back until you know Vince McMahon Senior, whatever that was, probably in the late '70s, early '80s. That you know, Vince uh, Vincent Kennedy McMahon was not at the helm of uh, you know all things booking. So I mean, there was a short window where uh, when Vince stepped down the first time that you know Triple H kind of stepped in. But I don't know that we got like a full we didn't get like a full season right to see like how he's going to handle things. So um, yeah, there, there's a lot of things that I just assume like oh well, WC or WWE is going to do it this way because that's how WWE does it. Might not be the case anymore, but time will tell. No, and I think he's – I've got to take a minute to give Triple H credit. He has taken dog shit and made some pretty good out of it. Like, yep. dude has flipped this company from the uh, – I don't know if I'm going to watch this week to – I have to see what happens. So, kudos to you, Triple H. Absolutely. I mean, the dude is insane. It's just crazy to me that he's – that people are, like, still doubting this dude. Every time you doubt him, he comes to plate and knocks a home run out of the out of the park. I think I think there are some fair uh, again, like it, uh, it's like for me, it's kind of like like are are you like an NFL fan? 
Yes, I just yeah. So like, okay, yep, yep. So uh, yeah, as we're recording this, um, the Super Bowl was last night. Congrats to uh, Chiefs Kingdom. Condolences to the Bang Bang Niner Gang. But um, you know, like it's okay for for example, like you you build up almost so much like brand recognition, right? We're like. It's hard for me to rationalize that the Patriots are like one of the worst teams in the NFL right now. Yeah, I know. like it's you know so it's it's kind of like when when you see things like okay Cody wins a rumble, uh he well he got screwed over at Mania last year, he wins a rumble and then inexplicably he comes out and gives his spot to a part timer to face the face of the company who's another part timer, you know like it's. Even even though yes, like Triple H is at the helm, like there's a bit of like brand recognition where people kind of roll their eyes and it's like Jesus, here we go again, you know, like let's let's wheel out Dwayne, Dwayne's fifty year old ass, and and let him, you know, take the spot for everybody that's been there all year doing it. So I, I don't know, I'm I'm kind of on the like I'm I'm optimi- cautiously optimistic, I guess is how I describe myself right now. I'm uh I'm enjoying the ride, um. But yeah, we'll we'll get a little bit more into that. Um, agreed. Okay, so first match of the night um is a fatal four way tag team championship qualifying match. We have New Day versus Imperium versus DIY. Uh, for any casual fans like me, uh, that is uh, Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Gargano. Phenomenal versus the Creed team. brothers. These are all pretty pretty good tag teams, yes. I think, in a fatal four-way championship qualifying match. Um, yeah, there's uh, there's three giant walls of text here, but uh, DIY wins via pinfall. So I think then the setup, uh, I think there's another qualifying match on SmackDown, and I think there'll be another one um, the following week. But... Um, yeah, that that's setting up to face uh, Judgment Day, uh, the tag team champions Finn Balor and Damian Priest, who is senior Money in the Bank at Elimination Chamber, Perth, Australia. Uh, anything you want to throw in here? I don't really have too much, uh, too many so thoughts. So I this do one. have a couple things. Go ahead. Because I'm a big NXT Black and Gold guy. Like that was my shit. 2015 through you know 2020 when they screwed everything up. So DIY has been burned in my heart forever. I was there when they broke up and had that phenomenal story where Tommaso turned his back on Johnny, and then Mm -hmm. they did it again a few years later. Man, I'm so angry with the way that the Creeds and DIY have been used on the main roster. The Creeds started off so hot. like They they are phenomenal human beings, by the way. We met them at the uh, watch party. Yeah, Yeah, we did. Great, great Great people. Nicest people you will ever meet in your life. And with Triple H in control, I thought maybe the NXT kids would be treated better. But, like, I'm not saying you needed to push them, you know, all the way up to the top right off the bat. But why have them keep losing and losing and losing and losing? You have them build this train of momentum, and then they just start losing constantly. So, for DIY, which we already knew who they were facing on SmackDown, which I'm sure we'll get into that when we go on to SmackDown, but – just like, what are y'all doing with this tag division? It has been shit for years, and it's continuing to be shit. That's all I have to say. Um, I think, um, I think for me, they they need to, I guess, the opposite of unify, segregate. I guess the tag team champions again. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, and that that's the other thing that you know I kind of alluded to, like things that as wrestling fans, like we just take for granted, like we can understand, but like trying to explain to my wife, like there's like 20 championships floating around. There's like, there's Romans, there's Seth's. And then the greatest she, United States champion of all time, Logan Paul. No, Lo, Lo, Logan Paul has a title. Uh, Gunther has the intercontinental championship. Um, there's the unified tag team champions. There's um there's the Rhea Ripley's team. title. Yeah. Yep, there's uh EO Sky's title, there's like the women's tag team champions, which I, I don't think those are unified. I think those are separate, right? No, they're I think they are they unified? I feel like I, I don't unified. I don't know if they are. 
I know, I, I know the know. Kabuki Warriors are, but you know, it's like, not like anybody cares because that division yeah. is all shit. Um, so like, so like, yeah, my my wife like throws out these questions like, well, why why is Roman's title like better than Seth's? And it's like, well, when when I was a kid, it was uh, this winged eagle was the about there was the the title that the top guy had. Hogan had it. Savage had it. Ultimate Warrior had it. Uh, I don't have an Intercontinental Championship, but you know that was always like the second prize, right? Yeah. Like, and now it's it now the line prize to get you to the main event. Yep, and and now now the lines are very blurred, where it's like, on paper, Romans and Seths are are equal, right? Like they're supposed to be like on different shows, but you unify them, you take them, you pull them apart. You you know, I mean, and I know like storyline wise, like you have to book you know fifty two weeks of TV. A year so i i get like that lines get convoluted but man it's it's getting hard to explain how the how guther's title is different than logan's and how it's different than sets and how that's different than romans and this is very things well, that i didn't really realize until i on that i don't i don't mean to cut you go off ahead. no go ahead but to be honest with you i think they need to get rid of those women's tag titles like like you said they need to split the tag titles and i'm gonna say a very hot take right now gunther's title to me, is more important than Seth Rollins' title because of the okay. way it's been booked. Okay. Like, my biggest problem with Seth Rollins' title run, it's supposed to be the opposite of Roman's title. Why in the entire fuck has he been the only one to hold it for a year? I, I what One one counterpoint I'll give to that is, like, I, I bet that, and I'd have to look this up, but... I bet that Seth has almost as many title defenses in his year-long run as Roman does in his, you know, like he, he calls yeah, it the I, workhorse championship. Yeah. I bet I, I bet he's rapidly approaching Roman. Yeah, I credit Seth for that. That's not my, my yeah. point. My point yeah. is if it's supposed to be the opposite of Roman's title, yeah, you have so many guys yeah. that could have took that and went to the stratosphere. Finn Balor yeah. is number one. I think that dude should be champion of the universe. I I agree. I Finn, Finn Balor's my yeah. I I've got uh here. I'll I'll expose oh. my my fandom. I've got a bin of Finn Balor action figures back here. That's I've got like uh they're not in bins, but I've got like an equivalent amount that aren't in bins back here. So That's amazing. Yeah. So he's uh he's my guy. Um. Yeah. I definitely hope they do more with him. I think obviously the judgment day has got to split first, but yeah. I feel bad for everybody except for Rhea Ripley we'll and Dominic Mysterio in Judgment Day. I really do. Yeah. I feel bad for Priest. I feel bad for Balor. Cause both of those guys have worked their asses off to get where they're at. And it's just yeah. like, oh well, let's throw our and credit to our truth. Our truth, you are freaking hilarious. A yeah. national treasure. Absolute national treasure, but, man. What is he doing in Judgment Day? Why can't we focus on the the you know members that built the damn thing in the first place? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's it's definitely over, which I guess there's something to be said for that. But yeah, long term story wise, I don't I don't know where they go with that. It'll be interesting to see. Like so, like you said, I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to for the first time in my life, I'm trying to be uh, op cautiously optimistic. I guess is where I'm at. Yeah. So. Okay, so uh, yeah, after DIY uh, won via pinfall, um, Shayna Baszler cut a promo in a women's elimination chamber qualifying match. Um, she said, last time I was in elimination chamber, I destroyed everybody in it in order to get to Becky Lynch, but that didn't go the way I wanted. Tonight, I don't have to do all that. I get Becky right away, and I can take care of her. Tear her apart limb by limb. Then it cuts to a Becky promo. Last time when I fought Shayna, I wanted to beat her because my title was on the line. This time when I fight Shayna, I need to beat her because my future's on the line. So then we get right into the Elimination Chamber qualifying match. Um, it's a good match. Uh, I don't – it's not noted here. And uh, shout out to WrestlingHeadlines.com for these results, by the way. Um, but uh, Becky Lynch wins via pinfall. Um, pretty good match. A lot of back and forth. Um, I feel like there weren't many high spots in it. Uh, no. not, not a lot of false finishes, if I recall. Um, so I, I would give it like a, a B, I guess overall is kind of where I'm going on that. Yeah. Uh, what, minus what, what are your, what are your thoughts on the, on the promos leading up to the match and the match itself? 
Never put a microphone in Shayna Baszler's hand again. Yeah. Never do it again. God love her. What I've said to do with her for years, because she is really good. Like, if you pay attention to her stuff, she's phenomenal. Please, yeah. for the love of her. I know he's a wise man, but put her with Paul Heyman. Yeah, I think that'd be good. Let her be the female Brock Lesnar. Yeah, I was Please, just going to say that. Please, man. Oh, my gosh. Could you imagine that? Just this silent, badass woman who just wrecks everyone. Yep. Because she's uh, yeah. phenomenal in the ring. But every think, time I, she has a microphone in her hand, I want to I think uh, I, I I totally agree. And I didn't mean to speak over you. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. You're fine. You're good. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, I, I think now that like Ronda Rousey is gone, um, I think that there's a lot more like upward mobility because you know, it's like she's a she's a badass. Like I think she has a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. But you know, I mean, like Ronda Rousey was the face of women's MMA for you know quite a few years, and I would say to this day she's probably still the most famous women's mixed martial artist in history. So um, you know, I I think that there was a lot of kind of like overlap, I guess, between the two of them. And yeah, I it, to your point, I I think they need to put uh, a mouthpiece with her. I think she should be a silent brooding, like, well, I can legitimately kick anybody's ass. Yeah. Um, yeah. Totally, totally agree. Um, let's see, kind of reading ahead here. Uh, and hopefully I get less clumsy with this as we continue to do shows. Hey man, it's um, about the smoothness. We're figuring stuff out, guys, so just be patient with this. Absolutely. Um, so Kathy Kelly had a backstage interview with, with Liv Morgan. Um Liv thinks Joey Stark is incredible, but respectfully, these girls have nothing to do with her business. She must have had one year of her career taken away, and next week is about her revenge, and her revenge is about Rhea Ripley. Watch her. Um, Adam Pierce is giving Drew McIntyre a head uh, a fine for headbutting Seth Rollins. He needs to maintain some order. God damn it. McIntyre mm -hmm. tells Pierce to take control of his show since there's only one true leader here. Um... Any thoughts on that? If not, we'll get into a segment between Rhea, Adam Pierce, and Nia Jax. I have no no thoughts on Liv Morgan. Like I said, I, I don't know what it is with these women, but they, they need to go back to promo class. For God's sake. There's, there's, there's def definitely some of that. A yeah. Another observation that my, my wife made when we were watching SmackDown is like, man, there's a lot of like, a lot of transitions where it's, you know, like it, it would be like, like the the damage control thing, and then it would just suddenly cut to like like the DIY uh, team getting ready for their match, and then and then it would be a different tag match, and it's, she's just like, like what is like why yeah like why like are these guys not fighting like is that later is it like there so there's a lot of hard cuts that I think like and I I'm I think I'm numb to it at this point but i i think for uh for like a casual fan just getting into it man that's uh there's some hard cuts there <laughs> yeah um okay so uh yeah uh rhea ripley adam pierce and nia jack segment so rhea says yes becky disqualified for the elimination chamber match but i'm not here to talk about qualifying matches i'm here because i want nia Jax in this ring one-on-one -on -one so i can rip her bloody head off because that's how they talk in australia I advise you to get in this ring right now. Adam Pierce says, hold on. You and I both know this is not the time for this, okay? I understand you're upset. Everyone can see you're upset, but we're not doing this right now. I get it. I know what you want. You want Nia Jax, so here's what I've done. I'm giving you for the championship. Or sorry, I'm giving Nia Jax. I'm giving you Nia Jax for the championship at Elimination Chamber. Does that work for you? She nods. Then yes, please, let's get the show going. This is not the time. Um, Rhea gets into a, a massive brawl with Nia. Uh, Jax knocks Pierce off the ring apron. Ripley tees off on Jax in the corner. Jax levels Ripley with the body avalanche, which I think I know is Yokozuna's bonsai drop. Uh, yes. Jax lays out the security team, and Jax plants... Rhea Ripley with the Annihilator. Your thoughts, Lakota? I hate Nia Jax with a burning passion in my soul. I never want to see her on my TV again. 
skin. I hate this woman. I don't know what I, I know exactly what it is, but I don't want to lean into the everything the internet says. When you had your number one job as a wrestler, and I spent some time in the business, but not as a wrestler, but as a manager, your number one job as a professional wrestler is protect your opponent. Look at her track record, guys. She has injured more people than I bet Vince McMahon's office has. Like, allegedly. 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 We cannot. Allegedly. We cannot. We had to throw that in there. Allegedly. Um, okay. But good God, I, I this is such a dark spell for Rhea Ripley. I I feel so bad for her because she has to work with her. I don't want to see this. I don't care. This is our piss break match. When I get up at 5 a.m. to watch Elimination Chamber over on my Twitch, Brotherhood Entertainment 2 at Twitch. We stream every show every week um, starting tonight going forward with Monday Night Raw. So tune in there. Um, man, this is just terrible. Awful. I, I hear you. I, I do think that given Rhea's uh, uh, history of injuring opponents, probably most notably – uh, breaking oh. Becky Lynch's nose, leading to her promo, making her the man, uh, which I guess silver lining there. I do think that uh, Nia is on pretty thin ice, uh, and I, I think she's aware of that. However, I think this is the first time that first time that I can remember that Rhea has faced somebody that physically she is less imposing than. So it'll be interesting to see how they build that dynamic because, I mean, Rhea's not – Super tall. I think she's like five seven, five eight. Um, she's got the lifts, but physically she looks so much bigger than she is. And yeah. and some of these women, like um, like we, when we met Ivy Nile from uh, from the Diamond Mine, right? So they're called yeah. the Diamond Mine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not tall. I'm like five eight, and I towered over Ivy Nile. And I yeah. I think that you know she's on the shorter side, but I think a lot of these women are five two, five three. So you get somebody like Rhea like um naya that just towers over them you know it it'll be interesting to see how uh you know maybe this time they're setting up mommy won't be on top we'll find out i hope Ooh. not god i hope not i i i i gotta think she holds on to the title bring yeah, it in or something because they're yeah because i mean yeah, I mean, they're, they're 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 already setting that up but yeah i mean you know mommy's uh mommy's got to fight from bottom to get back on top in this one for the first time um, in his career. First time ever. Third match of the night, Alpha Academy versus Vikings Raider, uh Viking Raiders in a mixed tag team match. So I, I did not watch this live. I watch this on um on Hulu. So they cut the show to 90 minutes. I think this match got cut. Thank um, you. Okay, uh so I'll I'll, re- I'll read through the synopsis here if uh, if that's cool. Go ahead. Um Okay, so uh, Valhalla drops uh, Maxine Dupree with a running forearm smash. Uh, Tazawa with a windmill kick to Ivar. Valhalla repeatedly stomps on Dupree's chest. Tazawa rips off his T-shirt. Tazawa runs around Valhalla. Tazawa ducks a clothesline from Valhalla. Tazawa lands the suicide dive. Uh, Tazawa sends Dupree to the corner. Dupree with a sunset flip for a two count. Dupree with a step up in Ziguri. Uh, Dupree follows that with a back handspring, back elbow. Uh, Dupree poses for the crowd. Tazawa tags himself in. Ivar catches Tazawa in midair. Um, that's paragraph one or two. Uh, Dupree with a flying crossbody block. Tazawa goes into the lateral press for a two count. Dupree ducks a clothesline from Valhalla. Valhalla with the Western Lariat. Valhalla sends Dupree out of the ring. Um, Dupree drops Valhalla with a running Lariat. Um, I'll skip ahead a little bit. Ivar gets d- distracted by Dupree. Valhalla with a pop headbutt on the ring apron. Ivar blocks the Sunset Flip Powerbomb. And Ivar connects with the Avalanche World Strongest Slam to pick up the victory. Winner is Ivar by pinfall. Your thoughts, Lakota? I I genuinely have no thoughts because I don't care. Like like I love Tazawa. I think Tazawa is another national treasure. I think that dude is phenomenal. But this poor Maxine Dupree thing. As soon as 
Max Dupree, God, thank you, Jesus, they fixed that. But I don't know if you were watching at the time, but when they when L.A. Knight debuted on the main roster, he was not L.A. Knight. He was Max Dupree. Max Dupree, yep. And it was one of the worst things I've ever seen. And I, I said for weeks, I said, if they don't change this, this is going to be the biggest – this is going to be the biggest bust since Keith Lee. Um, yep. And thank God they fixed that because look at him now. Um, yeah. But I just – she does not interest me. She's she's a very attractive woman to look at. That's that's her best quality. Um, but she does not interest me. This whole thing with the Viking Raiders and Valhalla, I don't care. Like I, I genuinely don't care. Yeah. It's a I think I, I think it's um I think I think that's one of those gimmicks like it's really hard to be like entertaining with. I, I think for a few weeks. You know, like it, like you can do some cool spots, like Bahala wearing the deer antlers, like that's funny. You know, like it's it's cool for like a couple times, but man, like I, I think that you could be like the best gimmick, or like you could, um, I think you could be like the best wrestler in the world. And there's some gimmicks that I just don't think you could get over. And I think the Viking Raiders are one of those that it just feels like, uh, just feels like a created tag team in SmackDown, yeah, like in one of the like the PlayStation games, so. Yep. I don't know. I think, uh, yeah, I think it is what it is. And it's sad because if you guys go back and watch their New Japan stuff when they were War Machine, please go back and watch that because, oh, my gosh, they're so good. But yeah. it's just some people, like, I would look for them to be on the next Slater releases if you want me to be truthful. Um, sure. And rightfully so because they're not doing anything useful with them. It – it's hurting them more than it's helping them. Um, I know they recently brought back Sarah Logan Valhalla just a few years ago. Um, but why the hell? Why? Nobody yeah. asked for it. She didn't ask for it. I think the only reason they brought her back is because of her husband. Of course, she's married to Eric of the Viking Raiders. But, yeah. you know, this is just a flop for all, all three of them. And, I, and, I, yeah. and it sucks because I know they're, they're, they're incredible performers. And the fact that they don't get to prove that is sad. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I know that there's, um, you know, the, the way the wrestling business is shaped, there's gotta be top guys. There's gotta be, you know, mid card guys. And there's gotta be kind of, this is going to sound insensitive, but there's gotta be kind of like fodder, right? Like there's, you know, there's gotta be like a lowest spot on the card. I, I agree. I think they're very talented. I think that there's a lot of potential with all of them. Um, yeah, I, maybe it's, maybe it's time to go away and do a rebrand. And uh, hopefully bigger things for the, all of them in the future. Yeah. Um, so next segment, um, our truth interrupts the judgment days meeting. Uh, truth still thinks he's part of the family. Uh, and Damon Priest says, you know what, Truth? Make yourself at home inside the clubhouse. So we'll see what happens there. I feel like they're build, building the awesome truth versus judgment day at elimination. Or not at elimination, but at mania. And I feel like. That's gonna be the feel good moment of the night. I I think so too. I think so too. I I think that um I mean we've already touched on it that you know Judgment Day um uh, Priest and Balor they're both really hardworking. Um, Miz I think is maybe one of the most um slept on under, people. Yeah, un- underappreciated people. I mean he's uh he's he's never. I'm not going to say he's never, but like for many, many years, he's not been top of the card. I know we, I know we had like that brief window where he, uh, he was transitional champion to, to give it to Bobby Lashley, he held it for like a day or something. Yeah. But you know, I, I think Miz is very slept on. And, uh, as we've stated, our truth is national treasure. So that's, uh, you know, kudos to all those guys that are, uh, Absolutely. they're doing, doing the Lord's work. Um, Fourth match of the night, we have uh, Miz versus J.D. McDonough, accompanied by Dominic Mysterio. Um, I don't have any recollections of this match. Do, do you? I don't either. I don't. Okay. It could have been because I was making food or something, and it just was that quick. Sure. Uh, sure. But I do want to talk about J.D. for a second. Yeah, uh, go for it. That dude is fucking phenomenal. And yeah. I feel like the reason that he's phenomenal, for those of you who don't know, he was trained by Finn Balor. Sure, right. he's Finn Balor's kid, you know. Um, and it shows. 
I think that going forward, when the Judgment Day does split, that's one thing you need to build upon. You know, maybe maybe have Priest needs to turn on Balor because I love Hill Finn, I do, but it's time for a change. Yeah. Um, so maybe you could have Finn get absolutely destroyed. Have Finn like disappear for like three months, sure. and then that whole time you could have JD be like, "What the hell, man? Like, you know, he looked out for you. You guys were family, and then sure have that little feud, and then we get the Demon Balor at like a like a SummerSlam. Demon yeah, Balor, definitely. Priest. Oh man, definitely. Oh, they, I mean, they need fun. to. They they need they need to have Demon Balor get a win because like I mean right now like Demon Balor is Jobber Balor yeah like, I don't uh, and it hurts it yeah. hurts my soul yeah it's it's rough but um yeah I, I'm I'm just reading through it there's a lot of shenanigans in the match Miz wins via pinfall to the surprise of nobody <laughs> you know <laughs> but it, that that is what it is um. Uh, so next, uh, Braun Breaker arrived for his meeting with Adam Pierce. Um, we get a video recap of CM Punk's surgery for his torn tricep. Um, Punk says his comeback will be the greatest of all time. And it will. Um, I hope so, man. I hope so. Uh, you know, at, at this point, not trying to be a Debbie Downer, I think Punk has had three pretty serious injuries in his last, like, five matches spanning across a couple of companies. So, I hope that I hope that Punk uh, has enough left to do like a, a couple good runs. Um, I I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic. I I think I think he has it, but I guess time will tell, right? Well, I kind of have to be on his side because the dude changed my life. Uh, he's the reason I'm uh -huh. sitting here talking about. Uh, yeah. That. So for me, it hurts so bad. Like I will be honest with y'all. When he lost the Rumble, and then I found out he was hurt, I cried. I'm a 21-year-old man, and I cried like a baby because here's my hero, a guy I put on a pedestal. He comes back home, and I think, man, this is it. You're finally going to get your moment. You're going to be appreciated for what you were because, let's be honest, he was a backseat to Dwayne when he shouldn't have been. He should have been the main event 100%. And then it just happens again. And I can only imagine how feel the person feels that maybe he's doubting himself, and I don't want him to do that. Maybe he's doubting himself, and I hope and pray that next year he wins that Rumble and gets his main event. I I hope so too, man. Two things I, I want to say in response. One, there's no shame in crying, man. It's still real to us, damn it. Oh, shit. It's still real Sorry. Sorry. Uh, I unplugged yeah, my mic. Oh, he unplugged his mic, ladies and gentlemen. I unplugged my mic, yep. We're having difficulties. Hey, it's all, this is all part of the plan. All right. Is it working? Yeah, you're good. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I tried to pick up my mic and say it's still real to us, damn it. It's still but, real. Um, <laughs> but um, where was I going with that second thing? Oh, <laughs> yeah. I, I, want, I wanted to point out like a little bit, like call you on the carpet. Yeah, Punk did take a backseat to Dwayne, and I wasn't cool with that either. But now you're okay with Cody taking a backseat to Dwayne. No, no. I was – hold on. Because <laughs> he's been busting my balls all week. I'm not cool with Cody taking a backseat. I'm not cool with that. But what I'm hopeful for, before they made this incredible fix, which we'll talk about in just a few minutes, oh, I was just so – I've been I've been saying for years, give me Tribal Chief versus The Rock because the story tells itself. Yep. Now, they went on a different pivot, which is amazing. I don't think anybody had it on their bingo card what ha happened Thursday. Nobody had that on their bingo card for 2024. But, good God, what it would have been. And I think, you know, like Cody Rhodes needs that moment. I've said that from the beginning. But I also said that I wouldn't be opposed to Brock versus Roman. But at the same time, like especially after that press conference, which I cannot wait to talk about, we want Cody, and we need Cody, for Christ's sakes. Hashtag we want Cody. Yes. Um, it's been trending so for like two weeks. Nec uh, next segment on the card, and I'll try to expedite things a little bit because I think we're probably running over on time a little bit. But um, Gunther has a 600-day championship celebration. The so GOAT. Basically I don't the know, goat. man. 
I don't know. I'm kind of like I I I love Gunther, but uh, some some of I some of your goats some some of your goats for the underneath titles like Gunther and Logan Paul. Like I love Gunther, but name one I, person that helped the title other than Shawn Michaels that's better than Gunther. Uh, the 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 Intercontinental title. Yes, and has made it one of the most predominant titles in the last ten years. Name one person. Other uh, than well, the Miz, the last, too. We, we can't, in the we last, can't go with Miz. In the, la- in the last – so I, I've I've always been a wrestling fan. Like, I've had, like, ups and downs like that. Mm-hmm. I kind of got a little bit out of it, like, maybe in the last, like, 10 years. But I would say, I mean, there's a lot of – so for, for me, like – for me, I was always more interested in the Intercontinental than than like the the top title because like when I was a kid, it was like your Shawn Michaels, it was your Bret Hart's. Roddy Piper had it, um, you know, like going to like the next era, like Jericho had it so many times. Um, God, I'm trying to think. Jeff Jarrett was like a really good worker. Um, Love Jeff Jarrett. Yeah. Uh, gosh, I'm I'm trying to think. Like like to me. To me, Jericho is probably the most prolific Intercontinental Champion of all time. If you ask me, I am a big Jericho mark. Uh, I don't know about you know, that, like current I, current al- current allegations notwithstanding. Like I've you know I'm I've I've been like a big Jericho guy his entire career. Um, but yeah, I, love, I you know oh, go ahead. I love Jericho, but if you want to talk about history books for the Intercontinental Title, other than a number. Name one match other than his match. There's one match that everybody can remember where Chris Jericho was the Intercontinental Champion, and it was his ladder match, I believe, in 08 with Michaels at No Mercy. See, I, I, I remember a lot of matches. There's a there's a uh, ladder match with uh, Chris Benoit, name oh. redacted, and oh. um, it, it's on one of the Royal Rumbles. It must be like. 2003 2002 but that is a that is a banger of a match and in hindsight looking back knowing that you know obviously what happened with chris benoit and knowing that you know the state of the brain like man there's a lot of really hard chair shots in there and yep obviously we'll you know we'll never know the extent of you know the contributing factors i'm sure it's not just one but Man, like there was some freaking bangers of a match. I remember Jericho doing programs of China. I remember Jericho doing programs of like the, I mean, the, there's so many. I, I feel like Jericho was like one of those, one of those guys that it's like he's he's on the Intercontinental, but he's like flirting with like the, you know, the the upper levels. Um, I don't know, like um, I, I, like I I gotta give Gunther, you know, his flowers. Like he's he's one of the greatest Intercontinental champions of all time. Um. I, yeah, I guess like we'll we'll see where they go. I I definitely think Gunther's gonna be in the, you know, in competing for one of the the upper belts. Oh yeah, you know, probably at SummerSlam. Um, oh, yeah. But we'll we'll see what happens at Mania. But um, yeah, so uh, Gunther comes out. Um, he holds a 600 day celebration. He does the uh, typical thing of, well, let's be honest, this is 600 days. It's gonna be 700, 800, a thousand. This is going to be the last celebration I hold until a thousand because it's a given. I'm going to get there anyway, because no one can challenge me. Quoting, there's no man worthy of challenging me for this great championship. I mean, who is it? You tell me who. And to no one's surprise, someone comes out. It is main event, Jey Uso. Jey Uso says, Oos, you earned it, but now I've earned it. And Gunther says, uh, you know, you're accomplished. You're part of the de- most decorated tag team uh champions of all time you were part of the best tag team in wwe history major props big ups um cj that's where i'm confused i don't understand how we see eye to eye because unlike you i've achieved all this on my own jay Uso does not like this he says um but i guess you're going to get 100 percent of this work then gunther so allow me to reintroduce myself they call me an uso a thousand days plus as a tag team champion, first tag team to main event WrestleMania. Oh, it's 2024, first time singles champion. And if you want Jey Uso to be the new Intercontinental Champion, let me hear you say Yeet. I'm not a fan of the Yeet, by the way. Um, it is up yes. So Gun- Gunther, uh, Gunther gives a verbal response before they get in a physical calamity. 
Imperium gangs up on Jey Uso. The New Day storms the ring. Excuse me, storms the ring to make the save. Your thoughts, Lakota? I love this. I think it gives a great spot until we get to Jay versus Jimmy and Mania for Jay to work towards. Uh, I don't love, however, the New Day's inclusion. Like, I get they had that whole thing with Ludwig Kaiser and whatever. But I feel yep. like, sorry, that's my dog. She's wanting out, but she can't go out. No, you're good. Um, but it's just, a it, you know, they're like, oh, well, he was feuding with this guy, so let's throw him in there too. So we're probably going to get a six-man tag team match. Actually, we can't because Gunther can't perform outside of the United States for another couple months. Oh, I forgot about that. Oh, no. Um, oh, I think that I match is made for next SmackDown. Yeah. I oh, okay, next SmackDown. Well, you know, if Gunther's passport didn't run out, then we probably would have got that at Perth, uh, in Perth. Sure. Or we would have probably got Jay versus Gunther in Perth. I don't know. But um, he, in a dream world – if you're going to have somebody beat Gunther after listening to Jay talk, have Jay beat Gunther and then have the brothers fight for the Intercontinental title at Mania. That would be awesome to see. Um, but I don't know. I, I love it. I think it's a great spot for Jay to be in leading up to his main event match with his brother. I'm going to call it a main event match because, damn it, they've earned it. Um, That's true. That's and. True. I just can't wait to see that match. I'm I'm really excited for brother versus brother, and I think this is a great pit stop for Jay on his road to WrestleMania. Exciting things to come for current and former members of the Bloodline alike, for sure. Yeah. Uh, Shinsuke Nakamura uh, does a backstage promo, um, essentially setting up, Cody, you wanted to fight me so bad. Um, you chose a bull rope match because you thought it would bring you an advantage because of your father. And his history there. Um, the only thing you're going to do is embarrass your family name, yada, yada, so on and so forth. Um, yeah, setting up for the main event of the night, which is Shinsuke Nakamura versus Cody Rhodes, the American Nightmare, in a bull rope match. Um, getting into the fifth match of the card, um, the P- Kabuki Warriors versus Katana Chance and Caden Carter for the WWE Tag Team Championships. Um... I don't have too much to say about this match I other than it. it's still it's it's the Kabuki. Yeah. Kabuki. Yeah, I feel I feel like it's kind of just there. It was a filler um, man. There is a overwhelming story involving the damage control and it I love that. that. I'm gonna be honest, yep. I, I love it. I love it because I love Bailey so much. And I think Same. her getting her her flowers because she has been probably the most disrespected for horsewoman in the entire group, in my opinion, in terms of being yeah. seen as a credible main eventer, and she should be because she's absolutely incredible. Yep. So it's for me, I'm so excited for her to get her moment. And I think the turn was done really well. Uh, like you said, your wife was a little bit I, I'm with your wife on that. Like, why would you bounce around and, and do all these things where it goes to damage control and then another thing? I feel like that's what's going to bring this feud down is it's not going to get enough time, and it sucks. Exactly. Exactly. I I totally agree. Yeah, and I, I think it's uh, I think it's Bailey's time, and I uh, I think Triple H knows that. Um, you know, Triple H obviously having the, the background in NXT. Um, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful that, uh, you know, these NXT, I say kids, I'm sure most of them are probably – Finn Balor's older than I am. Kevin Owens older than I am, and I'm old. But I, uh, you know, I, I hope they continue to get elevated. Uh, Bailey too. You know, she's she's definitely put in her work. She definitely deserves it. So we'll see Absolutely. what happens. Um, main event of the night: Cody Rhodes versus Shinsuke Nakamura in a bull rope match. Um, nice. a lot of back and forth. Um, couple spots in here of note. Um, Shinsuke goes for a high kick, a uh, spinning high kick. Uh, he misses. Um, he's then straddling the bull rope. Cody pulls it, does the, uh, Classic picks up the seven, picks up the proverbial seven ten split on the lower regions of Shinsuke Nakamura. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's, uh, there's mist involved, but ultimately it ends in a crossroads with the one, two, three Cody going over. 
Um, after the match, uh, Drew McIntyre attacks Cody Rhodes from behind. Um, McIntyre nails Rhodes with the uh, Claymore kick to close the show, but Cody ultimately won over Nakamura via pinfall before the credits roll. Any uh, closing thoughts for that match and Monday Night Raw as a whole? I got Mr. a couple. Carter. I got a couple. Go for it. Jesus Go Christ. for it. Oh, my gosh. Um, why in the fuck are we doing a bull rope match on a random episode of Raw? Why are we yeah, doing uh, a bull rope match in 2024 to begin with? So, I think it's um, – I mean, look, and I, I've – said this when we were talking privately um you know i mean at this point you know like i, I think they did all shinsuke and cody have done all that stuff like you know around christmas time with the uh i, for, I forget like what they took but it was like the american nightmare before christmas or something i think is like yeah. what they called those vignettes um you know i i think this is ultimately like you know the plan was for cody to win the rumble the plan was for cody to go on to wrestlemania um you know, and I, I think that this is all this kind of like filler. And at this point, you know, there's not enough time between now and Mania for Cody to start a new program with somebody else to mean anything. And, um, you know, like he's he's done matches with Shinsuke. He's done like the one on ones. And I think they had to basically make a random stipulation. And it's what's a match we haven't seen in a while. Bull rope. It makes sense because of, uh, you know, Dusty the history with, uh, with yeah. Dusty. And I, I I don't think there's any more to it than that. I think it's uh, setting up for the next. Well, man, I mean, here, here's the thing with that. Like, I get it. It's the ties to Dusty, you know. Good good for, you know, Cody or whatever. And um, sorry, guys, I'm trying to get my phone to charge. Um, but, man, it was just pointless. I feel like this match was rushed, too. Uh, it wasn't given enough time. I feel like Cody and Shinsuke are great performers. Uh, I think Cody Rhodes has proven that. I think Shinsuke Nakamura has proven that time and time again. Um, I just feel like it was rushed, and I was not interested. And the whole thing with Super Cody gets on my nerves. It get on, it got on my nerves growing up with Cena. It gets on my nerves with Cody. Like the dude goes through so much, and he just pops right back up. Like, yeah, damn, you know. Yeah, it, it's just one of those things that gets on my nerves. It could be where I was, you know, spent some time doing wrestling training, and I was always taught. Always sell, no matter what happens. Um, yep. And I feel like Cody does not sell enough. If you want me to be honest, I feel like he gets his moves in. He takes a bump. He like rolls around on the ground for a little bit, and then he pops right back up. And then he does his little dusty impression and everything. So it, it's wonderful. You know, it's not it's not great at all. Yep. I I hear you. I hear you. I I mean, the one thing about you know today's day and age is that wrestling fans are a lot smarter. And, um, yeah, I don't know if people are buying the same hulking up kind of, uh, you know, things that, that worked in the 80s and 90s and even the 2000s. But, let's see, I'm trying to find, like, full results for the press conference because that is what's next is uh, – Yep, and we're pretty much right on time. I kind of want to uh, let you guys know that I'm going to try, depending on his schedule, I'm free all the time. But depending on his schedule, it'll probably be like an hour, hour and 30 every week. So that'll give us a good time to, uh, you know, go over everything. True, true. And uh, and, and this this week we will have a – I guess some weeks we'll have uh, – they're not pay-per-view. They're premium live events. Some weeks we'll have premium live events to cover. Yeah. Um, but, you know, this week we uh, we have a WrestleMania 40 press conference or uh, – I don't know if it's a uh, kickoff show, I think is what they called it. Yeah. So um, we'll uh, we'll hop into that. Um, so yeah, to kick it off, we have the game Triple H. Triple H talks about the history of WrestleMania dating back to WrestleMania One. This is the 40th WrestleMania for those of you keeping score at home. Um, WrestleMania started airing on closed circuit television. You couldn't get it at your house. Pay per view wasn't a thing. You had to go to a movie theater buy a ticket. So. We've come a long way. Um, but he talked about the future um, going to pay-per-view. And uh, eventually it will air on Netflix next year as part of a $5 billion deal. Which is pretty mind-blowing. $5 Great billion. Dollars. Great. Hell yeah. Hell and yeah. I, I hope that, 
I hope that they, well, I, I guess it, it is, I think five years for sure. And then I think that Netflix has the, it's basically the equivalent of like a team option in sports where like if Netflix thinks it's going well, they can pick up a remaining five years for I think another $5 billion. So lots of money going around. Um, I hope Netflix doesn't put it behind like a premium tier paywall where you got to oh, pay like good $40 God. a month or something, you know, kind of like Hulu does with live sports or YouTube does with like NFL uh, Sunday ticket. you would got to buy the $60 a month YouTube TV. I ain't about that. I hope it's uh hope it's accessible just like it is on Peacock. Um, so uh, yeah, Triple H signs off with a, are you ready? Um, next up, uh, Bianca Belair comes out. Um, she uh, she did a plug for her Hulu show, Love and WWE. Um, she talked about how she made history at WrestleMania 37 with Sasha Banks. Um, nice name in a Sasha Banks. Mm -hmm. Hope she uh, comes back at some point. It's it's appearing she's going to be in AEW, but that's uh, maybe a topic for another day. Um, so yeah, she uh, noted she, along with Sasha Banks, become the, became the first black women to headline WrestleMania. Big ups to that. Um, Belair discussed her undefeated WrestleMania record to cheers, um, but she went on to say that she's not currently champion. Somebody from the uh, from the crowd shouted, "That's okay," and she said, "It is okay." But Belair teased going after a championship, and that will likely be competing in the Elimination Chamber match. So some foreshadowing there. Um, I think Belair's established herself enough that I don't, you know, I don't think that she needs. Uh, I don't think that she needs to hold a belt. I think she's um, she is the EST. I think she's making a name for herself, and any match she's in is a is a big match in my book. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Like, like I've told you before in private, I'm not the biggest Bianca Belair fan, but I feel like she's worked uh, hard enough to where she's a credible name, to where she doesn't have to have a title attached to her. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, did I care that she came out? Not really. Do I care Got what it. she does at WrestleMania? Not really. But sure. it'll be a big match regardless. And I think her moment with Jade Cargill at the Royal Rumble was something that generations will talk about. Because, guys, you can I – want, I want to preface this. I don't know if you felt the same way. But you can project how loud a building is on TV. But when you're there in person, it is yeah. so much louder. Like yep. that place was, there was not a soul in a seat when those two stood off and faced off for that, yep. you know, minute and 30 seconds that they were standing there looking at each other. It was yep. one of the most electrifying moments I have ever been a part of. And I can't wait to see where those two go in the future, which it's being reported that they're going to get a tag title run, which I don't care because nobody cares about tag titles, but I hope they do something better with those two. I I, I mean, I'm, I'm excited for, for a tag title run because that eventually means – the split. Probably, yeah, the split. Yeah. Um, so I, I think a lot of cool storylines there. Um, I, I am a, I'm a big Bianca Belair fan. Uh, I, I maybe it's because I've got like a, a young daughter, and mm. you know it's cool to see. Uh, I, she's a fan of like the, the hair. She's a fan of the music. She's a fan of, you know, like oh, I mean, prior to Jade Carter, um, Bianca was a pretty uh, one of the strongest, I would say. So, uh, yeah, my daughter's a big fan, and that makes me uh, a big fan. I, I do think that, you know, since um, Sasha Banks, Mercedes Monet, is uh, not with the company and it's looking like she probably won't be, I do feel like Bianca's kind of slid in to that spot as, like, the de facto fourth horsewoman. I don't know. What do you think? I, I would yeah. say that. I, I don't think uh, many people would look at it that way. But yeah. maybe, like... And I hate to say this, and it's going to sound weird, but maybe like they needed that black African American strong female woman, and, and she fits sure. right into that role, and it's phenomenal, and it's good for her. So, so I think she's um, she's doing great with what she's given. I just I genuinely don't care. Which I what I don't know if you watched any of her NXT run. I know you're not a bit NXT guy, but I I, I historically haven't. Like I'm I'm going yeah. to be more up more open to it and get more into it i think as we do this so i'm a little burnt out on bianca belair that's that's my okay point. i just okay. i've watched her for so many fair. years that i genuinely do not care fair fair enough all right well we'll we'll agree to minorly disagree on this uh, big ups to, big, big ups to bianca man 
Yep. Okay, so so next uh, next segment, um, Rhea Ripley faces off with Becky Lynch. By the way, uh, these results are coming to you from Forbes.com. Big ups to Forbes. Much appreciated Forbes. with the results here. I appreciate you. Um, absolutely. So Rhea Ripley comes out to a huge pop. Um, she seemed uh, legit thrown off by the mommy chance she received, which I don't know why. Um, that that's their writing here on Forbes. Uh, I don't exactly remember that. Um, I, I do feel like she seemed a little unsure on the mic. Th this is kind of a kind of a different event where like it it fills an arena, but you're not really wrestling. It may be a little more. Um, I've heard different. like Brock Lesnar. Yeah, I've heard Brock Lesnar talk about you know like he he's totally fine coming out to twenty thousand, eighty thousand people in an arena, but if he has to do like a like a speaking thing in front of a hundred people, like he's more uncomfortable than he's ever been. Maybe there's a little bit of that here, you know, cause it's kind of like there were fans very closely around at very different dynamics. I could, I could see that, but um, yeah, I, I love Rhea and everything she does. Um, she did promote her upcoming match against Nia Jax who received booze um, in Perth, Australia at elimination chamber. And she said she'll be ready for whoever wins um, the uh, women's elimination chamber. Um, this uh, prompted an appearance by the man, Becky Lynch. Uh, fans did a sing-along with Becky Lynch's song uh, as Becky was almost as over as Ripley. Um, that will be, uh, assuming it goes that way, which is looking like it's going to, that will be a pretty legitimate match. Um two very over people uh becky obviously a traditional baby face Rhea, i would say um i would say more a tweener role um you know like a she she does very heel things but uh man she's over as hell and you can't argue with that um so lynch promoted the potential matchup between her and ripley she dubbed his mommy versus a man uh after more mommy chance lynch said she's made a legendary career out of knocking golden girls from their top spots and mommy's going to find out what it's like to be at the bottom. The two faced off as WWE advertised its upcoming segments. That was uh that was maybe the best segment of the night for, for my money. I'm interested to hear your thoughts. Oh man. It was probably the second best. Fair. And I mean, the background speaks for itself. I think this press sure. conference will be one of the biggest moments that WWE looks back to in its history um, because Cody was a main eventer, but I feel like after this press conference, he's the guy like, yeah, he's the guy. And I think this press conference solidified that he is this generation John Cena. Sure. I, that's just the way I look at it. So this might be the second best segment to, for the night for me, but I do remember Rhea kind of taking a moment and, just like looking at everybody like, wow, this is really working for me. Um, yep. And I'm, I'm really glad that she's cause good God. She's amazing. I love her. She, today. she is. She um, is. And I, I, I hope that she's, uh, I, I, I think that the setup for, I mean, there's not a lot of premium live events in her home country of Australia. She's going in as the champion, you know, maybe, maybe the first for the first time ever in storyline as like an underdog. You know, yeah. Naya, obviously very physically imposing first time that she's been, you know, not physically towering over her opponents. So it's a it's a interesting setup and we'll see how it all plays out. Yeah, I'm excited. Same here. Same here. OK, as you alluded to, Mr. Carter, um, definitely the main event of this press conference. Um, what is going to happen for the because as of now, I mean. A couple of weeks ago on SmackDown, um, Cody came out. He said he was uh, he was going to take everything from Roman, but he said not at WrestleMania. Um, that seemed to heavily imply that it was going to be The Rock versus Roman at WrestleMania, and Cody would be left to square off with Seth freaking Rollins. Um, however, we haven't officially gotten that confirmation. Um, so Seth Rollins comes out. Um dressed as only Seth Rollins does <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a in a green velvet suit um, wearing uh, black shoes with giant white bow ties which would be alluded to uh, by Roman 
uh, coming up. But yeah, Rollins comes out. Um, he said he wanted to know what the WrestleMania main event was. He said, let's get to it. Let's cut to it. Um, while attempting to introduce Cody Rhodes, um, Rollins was interrupted by Roman Reigns, who came out. Uh, Romans asked that the uh, fans in attendance in Las Vegas acknowledge the tribal chief. Um, this led to brief tribal chief chants. Um, Rollins and Roman had a confrontation. Um, they, there were some verbal back and forth. Um, Rollins opened the festivities with, wow, he showed up to work for once. Uh, this got a reaction from the crowd. Reigns swung back and said Rollins showed uh said Rollins showed up to work in his wife's shoes, as we alluded to the black shoes with the bow ties on them. Um, the two went back and forth um, before Reigns said, "You know what? Rhodes has hesitated too much. He doesn't get to decide anymore. The ball's in my court. I get to pick, and I'm picking the Rock." This led to the Rock coming out, all dressed in black, came out to accept the challenge. Uh, the Rock received mostly cheers, but was booed. Uh, the second his music shut off, um, which I think we all kind of expected. Amid yeah. the boos, there was a there was a smattering of Rocky chants, um, but they were drowned out by Cody chants. Um, Rock did his finally line as anticipation builds. Um, the Rock asked fans whether or not he thought, uh, whether or not they thought he was going to beat the Tribal Chief. And they chanted, we want Cody. Rock asked if fans thought he would be the biggest main event in WWE history, and it got booed. A frustrated Rock introduced the press and the millions watching at home to the Cody crybabies. Loud boos continued to pour in. Rock showed the crowd his family bloodline tree. Um, we don't have it here, but it was a big graphic that showed the entire family tree and the history of uh, Roman and the Rock's families and, uh, you know, their significance to professional wrestling at large. Um, the Rock had to battle what chance throughout it, which, uh, you know, the Rock was kind of fighting from underneath this whole time. Yeah, he went with um, it very well, though. He, he did. And, he, played, uh, and he played him like a fiddle. It, it, exactly. And, uh, and the, next, um, the next paragraph from Forbes, um, exactly like you were saying, the Rock seemed to go full heel. By telling the chant, uh, telling the crowd, if you don't think The Rock versus Roman is the ma biggest main event in WrestleMania history, it doesn't matter what you think. The Rock said, whether fans like it or not, Rock and Roman are the biggest main event in WrestleMania history. Bound by blood, he then hugs Roman Reigns, which again, this is uh, my wife not, you know, uh, pointing out things. Cousins. Yeah, po po pointing out things like she. So she, I did smarten her up that they're cousins, but one thing she pointed out like well if they're if they're going to be fighting at the main event like why are they hugging like i get their family but like this it's kind of weird and i i agree like if like if you're setting that up like they've always seemed a little too chummy i know their family but it's, i i don't know like i it, it's a it's a very weird area for me i don't know what your thoughts are on that um for me it's big brother and little brother yeah you know it's kind of like that yeah i'm gonna beat your ass but you're still family, you know? Yeah. Um, so maybe I don't think – like if they were going to go this way, I think maybe it's like, you know, I we family, but it's time to go to war. Um, sure. And I think that's what it was because if you pay attention, I don't know if you know Samoan um, culture or anything, but the way they shook hands or grabbed hands, that's a sign of war in Samoan culture. Okay. Um, okay. So they were ready to go. Um. I think oh, yeah. that the rock turning heel is probably the best way they could have went with this. Um, it, genuinely, I didn't expect it at all. And then when it happened, I was like, yes, I want more. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't like the direction that they're going in a tag match. I don't know if you saw that teaser at the Super Bowl where they like teased the tag match between Cody Rollins and Rock and Roman. I, 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 I didn't, but um, I'll find no, it I, I to you later so you can see what I'm talking about. But, um, okay. It's – I don't like that. I mean, I you know, like people were saying, what if Triple H was alluding to the fact that the first WrestleMania main evented with a tag match? Oh, man. It's okay. To me, the way I would do it, if you're going to have Rocket Mania, which you pretty much have to now 
you can't not have The Rock have a Magic Mania. Yeah. Have yeah. Cody do the angle like Brian did in 2014. Have The Rock beat Cody's ass for week after week after week. And then Cody's like, you know what? I've had enough of this BS. You, me, WrestleMania. And The Rock says, okay, but you have to beat me to get to the Travel Chief. And that way Cody can be the underdog and finish his story looking like an absolute demon. If I, I would, I would mostly be okay with that. Yeah. I do think, yeah, I, I do. I do think they've had to make a lot of pivots like with, um, without getting like too into anything. I mean, obviously like Brock Lesnar probably figured in, you know, at, at some level, like they didn't think CM Punk was going to get hurt. Like there's yeah. been a lot of, a lot of shifting, um, all that, you know, all that in with the fact that was it the day before uh, the Royal Rumble, those um, allegations, which we won't get into, came out against Vince McMahon, yeah. the, the yeah. lawsuit and the and the um, text alleged text message leak. Um, yeah, I think I think they've had a lot of pivots to make. And um, I don't know. I, I got to say, like, I, I think a tag team match would be a little bit of a letdown. But I guess, um, yeah, I'm. You know, uh, you you've converted me. I'm uh, I'm cautiously optimistic. I I want it to I want it to end with Cody going over Roman one on one, holding the title at the end of the night because I think that's I think that's the only fitting ending that he deserves. I don't want any triple threat nonsense or you know something that I I want Cody to beat the guy one on one. Yeah, and uh, and I I think that's the only way to go, but. Um, so yeah, actually, uh, on the note of Cody, um, Cody comes out to massive cheers, no, no music, which I thought was, uh, was, kind of he was the only, he, yeah, he was the only one of the three that didn't get it. So I, very, very interesting. Um, well, it yeah, also and, made it feel more real too. So maybe that's what they were going for. That, that very well could be. So Rhodes came out and said, this right here is bullshit. Um, Rhodes said, Roman, it's not your choice to choose who I pick at WrestleMania. Rhodes said, I've made my decision at WrestleMania 40 in the main event. I choose Roman Reigns. Fans explode in cheers, um, with poor Seth Rollins standing off to the side, forgotten. And me, yeah, man, throughout this, like Rollins played it as well as he could, but he was, he was not put into, That's uh, point. yeah, he, he definitely sad. kind of. Yeah, he he definitely kind of felt like the like the yeah. kid pick last in like the softball game. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. Um um fans uh yeah, fans exploded in cheers with poor Seth Rollins standing off to the side forgotten. Reigns told Rhodes to go with the losers bracket with the dummy in green, uh alluding to Seth Rollins. Um Reigns called Cody's dad irrelevant and Rhodes responding by telling Reigns he doesn't have family, he has goons. And none of them have been doing any cooking for themselves in the last two years. Um, Rhodes said if Reigns' grandfather or Peter Maivia were here, he'd be ashamed of Roman Reigns. Um, this led to The Rock basically stepping up and saying, when you talk about his family, you're talking about my family. When you're talking about his blood, you're talking about my blood. So now you got a problem with him, you got a problem with me. Um, the Rock... Uh, Landed a slap on Cody unseen since uh, uh, since Will Smith landed one on uh, Chris Rock at the <laughs> at the Oscars a few years ago. The slap heard around the wrestling world. Um, Rollins and Rock uh, got into a profanity laced uh, shouting match. Um, SS stormed off and the crowd booed the Rock out of the damn building. Um, man, one thing that to your point, I really feel like they're setting up a, a tag match because. I mean, when uh, when Rock landed that slap on Cody, Rollins shot in there like, like Rock had slapped his wife. Yeah, you know, and and, uh, and I yeah. think it builds character for those two because those two going into Cody's return at Mania thirty eight. Yep. Yeah, thirty eight. Those two were the one of the biggest matches and probably the biggest feud of that year. One of the greatest. Matches of all time with a Hell in a Cell match with Cody with the torn pec. So I think this is them coming full circle. And, you know, Rollins saying, you know what? He's earned his damn spot. He's earned my respect. He's earned his spot. You're not going to come in here. You're not going to be part of the board. You're not going to do that political shit. You're not Hogan. Um, And so I think this is phenomenal. I think the fact that if there was any doubt 
in anybody's mind that Cody Rhodes is Dusty Rhodes' son, it all left them with this press conference because just the way he carried himself and his mannerisms and the way he spoke screamed Dusty Rhodes. Yep. You could echo it, and it was so good. And and Cody has time and time again impressed me with his promo work. Although it's the same shit every week. My daddy was Dusty Rhodes, but he mm-hmm. makes it work. Yeah. On the other hand, the same thing that I it aggravates me is they're not talking about how good Cody is. It's always about Dusty. Yeah. Like get yep. Dust. Like yes, it's for Dusty. He's doing it to do it to give it back to his father that he never yeah. got because they took it away from him in Madison Square Garden. Yeah. yeah. But he's yeah, I- such a great performer that it needs to be focused on Cody and Cody's family. If you don't know, Cody Rhodes has a daughter, Liberty Rhodes. Focus that. Say, you know what? This was for my father, but now I have to do it for my family to prove to my daughter that no matter what adversity you face in life, nothing can stop you as long as you believe in yourself. And that's the story they need to go with. Yep. I, I totally agree. I took, yeah. And I've, I've thought that too, that, I feel like um, I feel like some of these stars, like Charlotte's another one that um, obviously her her dad being Ric Flair. He's not as good um, as when dad puts her out to me. So like, oh. I I I I just I just think like there's so many times where like they like it's just constantly like, well, do you know who my dad is? Do you know who my dad is? Do you know who my dad is? And yeah, yeah. To your point, like it's time to like establish these people to kind of like stand on. Like I feel like Cody's kind of like teased that where he said like. You know, obviously, like I think about him every day. I don't remember if it was like an interview before the Rumble, but you know, we talked about like obviously, like you know, he's always with me, and I'm you know always following in his footsteps. But yeah. at some point, like I don't want to just be Dusty Rhodes' son, and that and that's fair. You know, um, I I want to be more than that. You you can be in addition to that, but you know, he's and I I think if he you know if he goes over at WrestleMania and does what no one in his family has been able to do. Leave him the, the top fun. belt. Yep. Then, uh, yeah, he's he's uh, building his own legacy for sure. He's no longer so, just his kid. He's the champion. So Exactly. Exactly. Um, okay, so let's see. Let's get into uh, SmackDown. And so um, – if it's okay with you, uh, may- maybe we'll do a little bit more like rapid fire through this, and then we can yeah, just yeah. kind of give our thoughts as a whole. Yeah. Um, so these are these results are a little bit uh, less detailed. They are from CBSSports.com. Um, next time, I'll try to get more uh, more details lined up before we get into this. So um, SmackDown opens up with Triple H coming out, um, basically saying, "Well, I okay, I guess." Um, Take one step back. Um, so the one thing that we didn't cover about the press conference is um, after the press conference, um, they showed some backstage footage. Uh, wow. Rock and Rock, Rock and Roman. What you good? Oh no, I'm just so excited because this oh. moment right here is what solidified it as. Oh fuck, this could be real. Because exactly. when, walk, when Rock comes through the the curtain. They don't bleep it, which I think was a great choice. And people said, well, they didn't know he was going to say it. They knew he was going to say that. But the fact that they didn't bleep him saying, have him talk shit about my family again, and I'll smack his teeth down his throat, solidified this as, oh, shit. Wait a second. Wait a minute. That ain't supposed to happen. Um, I think think we've seen it very gradually. I think in the next five to ten years, we're going to go back to a PG-14, the TV-14 product. Sure. But that moment where he's like, have him talk shit about my family again. I'll knock his teeth down his throat. You fix it or we'll fix it. Yep. Like that blew the internet up. So I'm very excited about that. Um, That was probably my my highest point of that along with Cody's promo. Um, Sure. But the fact that they were just able to slow that slight little – because to a casual fan, it's probably not a big deal, right? But to us – the guy who watches every week, we're like, oh, that's not supposed yep. to happen. But yep. it was just something so slight and so minute, a minute detail that made it 10 times above the level yep. that it was already at. Yep. 
Yeah, when when you can make the the every week diehards kind of suspend their disbelief, you're you're doing something right. Yeah. So, cool. So, um, yeah. So, uh, to kick off SmackDown, Triple H basically comes out and says he's standing firm on his decision. Um, he alludes to some people might not like it, and uh, maybe some salt in the wound. He said, "It doesn't matter if you like the main event." Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, uh, did not see, um, I thought maybe Rock or Roman would come out. They did not, but we'll see, uh, we'll see what happens on Raw. Roman will be there next week on SmackDown. Good deal. Good so. deal. Um, so, uh, oh, go ahead. On SmackDown, I just, I just hope that The Rock isn't like, I hope The Rock shows up, you know, towards the build. Like you can't have a moment yeah. like that just happen and then not show up two weeks yeah. and then three weeks and then four weeks. Yeah. And then the last week of WrestleMania, you just all of a sudden pop up again. But continue yeah. on with SmackDown. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you, by the way. Like if like if you're at least for these part timers, it's like if you're gonna be there, like you gotta be there every week. Like this yep. can't be like a – I mean, Roman hardly shows up now. Like you gotta be better than that. I um, don't think that to a degree. I think Romans earned that. Yep. Yep. I, I, I don't know. I, I guess like, I, I feel like if you, like if you're champion, like you should be the, at least on every pay-per-view, you should be defending it. Yeah, absolutely. Like, we'll, we'll have, yeah. I mean, like you got to make every raw, not necessarily every SmackDown, not necessarily, but like, you gotta. I mean, his match at the rumble was probably the worst match on the card. Yeah. I mean, and, and they're, they're only being four matches. Like that's not, you know, yeah. like I didn't think any match was bad, but Yeah. I, I would I would say it was definitely most predictable because you knew you knew the build was for yeah. WrestleMania. Um and you knew that AJ of, was gonna take the pin because they're not gonna diminish Randy's momentum or LA Knight's momentum. So you yeah. kind of knew that AJ was just thrown in there to take the pin. So Yep. Uh, agreed. Agreed. And I like this is my problem, like when they come to like house shows and stuff. It's like where where I live, like okay, so it's a non televised match. Like the title won't change hands on Raw, but you know, like they'll they'll advertise like these matches, and it'll be like for the Intercontinental Championship, or you know, and it's like okay, well, wish this was a non-title match because now I know that the one finish that they're going to go with isn't the champion losing, mm-hmm. you know, like in pinfall or submission. They can do like a DQ, they can do a countout, they can do some kind of nonsense, but the title's not changing hands on a non-televised show. So the last house show I went to was two years ago, and it wasn't even a, a WWE house show. It was AEW's first. House rules. Oh, okay. And uh, it was actually really good, but like I refuse to go to WWE house shows because they're just glorified, you know, take your kids to this to see John Cena type things. Oh, sure. Yeah. I, I I hear that. And I, you know, as as a dad, that's kind of where I'm at right now. You yeah. know, and the place uh, the place that I live is a pretty pretty small area. So I mean, if we can get anything that's not a country music concert. You know, I'm I'm pretty much on board with it. So, um, Love it. yeah. So, uh, so there's kind of a now now that um, you know, Triple H has said he's standing firm on the decision. Um, basically, um, you know, the next setup with uh, um, Adam Pierce and Nick Aldis and Triple H in the ring is saying, well, what does that mean for Seth? You know, and so that leads to. Um, the announcement of uh, the men's elimination chamber match, and um, essentially there are six qualifying matches um, to take place in the next seven days, and those matches will feature the likes of Randy Orton, Bronson Reed, Kevin Owens, uh, alleged crypto scammer Logan Paul, the phenomenal AJ Styles, The Miz, Bobby Lashley, Ivar. Drew McIntyre, Sami Zayn, Dirty Dom Mysterio. Nick didn't get into the didn't get into the bracket. And L.A. Knight. Yeah, yeah, that's a hell of a field. Uh, um, I feel like Logan has to be in this match, right, to create a viral moment. Probably. I mean, yeah, just, just look, looking at it. Pod, yeah, right? he has to jump yeah. off the other pod. Him and Kevin yeah. Owens. That's a good way to further their feud. Sure. Um, and have those two create a viral moment. Dude, imagine like Kevin Owens does that like inverted suplex off the top of the pod to Paul. Oh, that would hurt so bad. Um, but I yeah, so. 
like I'm, I'm very excited about it. Um, very excited about uh, this chamber match for the first time in like three years. I'm actually excited to watch the elimination chamber. So same, same. And, and actually, I mean, like, I guess like we'll, we'll get into it like in a, in a minute here, but um, actually the, the first matchup for the elimination chamber surprised me because like looking at the names, I thought these guys would both be in it. Um, mm -hmm. And I guess I'll, I'll jump right into it. But um Drew McIntyre defeated AJ Styles via pinfall. Um, uh, it basically ended with uh, McIntyre hitting a Claymore. Um, LA Knight came out before the match started. Um, we obviously know the the heat between LA Knight and uh, AJ Styles that was uh, building up going into the Royal Rumble. Um, there was a spot in the match where uh, McIntyre uh, knocked AJ Styles down uh, next to the uh, commentator's table. Um, LA Knight took his uh, bottle of water, tipped it over so it would be running off the table onto AJ Styles. AJ Styles obviously was rightly pissed off by this. He gets up, gets in the face of LA Knight. Uh, I think he, if memory serves, he pushed LA Knight, um, knocked him down. Um, but yeah, basically LA Knight's distraction leads to uh, McIntyre hitting a Claymore to uh down aj styles for the one two three in the middle of the ring and uh yeah mcintyre's in the elimination chamber and aj styles is not so uh i gotta think this is building for a program between aj styles and la knight i gotta think that la knight's probably in similar circumstances gonna lose his match um, we don't know who that's gonna yeah. be yet but what do you think i mean that, that's pretty self-explanatory right if you're a wrestling fan you kind of know where they're going with that where Yep. LA Knight's going to get screwed over by AJ, and then they're going to have their match maybe at the Chamber. Um, yep. I didn't see both these guys going into the Chamber. I kind of saw this coming. Um, okay. You know, I kind of felt, you know, I kind of, which you're getting back into it full time now, so you'll you'll gradually get there. But, like, I've never had an off spell in wrestling. So, like, I like to think I have a very, very good mind when it comes to booking. So, like, I could, I could see it from a mile away. Um, that that's where they were going, but yeah, I think it's a good way to get there. Um, sure. like I said, I don't think Drew McIntyre needs to be in this spot. Uh, I really don't. Um, I'm not saying the guy doesn't deserve to be on the pay per view, so sure. I know I'm going to get a lot of flack for hating on Drew McIntyre, but I just don't think he deserves to be in that main event spot. There's so many other guys. Um, Finn Balor comes to mind. The the fact yeah. that, that these two haven't got a big – which they've gotten, you know, pay-per-view main events against each other. But the fact that Seth Rollins and Finn Balor, the guy who tore his labrum in 2016, hasn't had like a WrestleMania build is criminal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so – Yeah. I, know, I, 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 I feel like we've feel like we seen that match like a couple times after – like. Like after Edge left the company, Balor basically went from jobbing to Edge to jobbing to uh, to Rollins. Okay. So yeah, I don't know. I yeah. I do think I do think that Drew is probably going to be the person that faces Mac, um, uh, not Mac, uh, Rollins at WrestleMania. I think he's I think he's winning the Elimination Chamber to go on. Um, I can't say I necessarily agree with it. Um, I so does Rollins drop the belt at Mania? Because he's legit hurt, like he's legit injured. So does he drop the belt? Um, I think uh, so. I, I think, I think either Rollins Rollins retains and then loses it to CM Punk at SummerSlam, or okay. um, or Drew is a transitional champion to hold yep. it for a couple months. Um, you know, because I I mean right now like Punk and Rollins, even though they've they've very vehemently stated that they're you know they're not friends. Uh, as of now, I, I would say they're both kind of more in the babyface realm. Um, I don't and... think Punk's injury is as serious as they say it is. Okay. I think they're playing it up. I, granted, he's hurt. Like, he, you can yeah. tell he's hurt. But I genuinely yeah, don't he had think surgery. As, as serious as they said it was. Um, what I think they're slowly building to is that one moment where maybe McIntyre thinks he's going to win, and then out comes Punk. Or, sure. you know, maybe we get like a – Elimination Chamber 2010, where Shawn Michaels. You remember when Shawn Michaels like came up through the floor? And oh yeah, yep, super and kick super kicked the Undertaker. Yep. What if we get Punk at the Chamber, picks him up, GTS, 
rolls out because you could do a GTS with yeah. Molly, right? So, sure. like, you could you could have Punk still be injured, which he really is, but you could also build that there, and you could also sure. get McIntyre out of this terrible story that he's in. Sure. Sure. I, I think um I, I think historically, like I've listened to a lot of the Bruce Pritchard podcast and they've kind of they've really said that like, you know, having these like baby face versus baby face matchups, like they're they're not big fans of it. You know, no, it um, not yeah, not and and right now I would say that Rollins and Punk are both on the on the baby face side yeah. of things. Well um I do think that there is a component like uh I don't know exactly when Drew's contract expires, but he has one of the um I think him and Balor both expire not long after WrestleMania. Balor, so I guess that, leave, brother, just leave. Go back to New Japan. I don't know. Like I'd, I'd never probably see him then. I, I guess I could make a point to, you know, watch that stuff more. But I don't know if he, if he leaves WWE, oh, he'll pretty much yeah, fall off the face of the earth to me. Please, Jesus, go to AEW, please, God, or something. Oh God, I don't know. Just don't. Go um. Gosh. So, yeah, I, I do. I mean, I think that, you know, like if uh, if McIntyre resigns, like I do think that might factor in a bit, you know, mm -hmm. but but well, I mean, I, I do think those are the likely outcomes. I, I think eventually it's, you know, it's setting up for um, for Punk Rollins, um, but whether or not, uh, you know, McIntyre is uh, in between them, that is yet to be seen in my book. Yeah. Um, so um yeah pretty deadly um star in a vignette that has the ghost of queen elizabeth in the clouds uh <laughs> i don't i don't have anything to say about that other than i those. love these two i adore pretty deadly i do they're so good they're genuinely you can tell they're genuinely charismatic and um yeah and the fact that they made that work and made it funny and make it make sense like I've been calling Pete Dunn Pete Dune for uh, a Dune. week now. Um, so that's something that will be sticking in the back of my mind now that Pete Dunn is now Pete Dune. So um, I, I hope I hope this can be like a better version of um like uh like what like what was that team? Tyler Breeze and Fandango. Like they had a name. Yeah, Breezango. Breezango. Okay. I, I hope they can be a better version of that. Yeah. Um so I, I these results don't seem like they're in order, but I'll just go with the next one they have listed. Mm -hmm. Um, so in a women's elimination chamber qualifying match, um, Bianca Belair faced uh, Michin, and mm -hmm. to no one's to no one's surprise, uh, Bianca hit a KOD to get the one two three. I don't have too much to say. I I think that one is pretty obvious. Michin's going to be on the next uh, order of releases. Um, I hate to say it, but they're not doing anything with her, and she's going to be gone in the next year. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, ho hopefully, she can, uh, you know, go uh, get a rebrand and join her husband and, back and, and you know go to AEW. Yeah, yeah. Because I feel like she would fit well there. I mean, I don't know if you watch much of their product, but you need to start if you don't. Um, I I don't know how to. Like, I don't have well, I don't have cable. I'm not going to get cable. Um. So the way I watch myself, I don't have cable either. Um, I watch YouTube TV. It's like $75 okay. a month, but it's the same. Like, it's literally the same as cable. It's only $75 a month, and it has like yeah. 60 plus channels, and that's how I watch my yeah. stuff. But, um, yeah, it's yeah, a Yeah, I hear you. I can't wait um, to see what they do on their next pay-per-view. Um, but, yeah, I just uh, I feel like she fit well there. So moving forward, for, I don't for, really for me. Much for for me for me AEW lost CM Punk they lost uh, Cody Rhodes they lost they're not booking Dan Housen, which WTF no, Punk like, is delusional bro he allegedly I, like I, I have to say allegedly but the dude has to be on coke like I'm serious I I I say this as a person who who's taken Adderall before in a prescription sense I think <laughs> he's on a lot it, of Adderall. I, I mean, I I have no idea. Like it, the brother don't blink. It, it's it's it seems like some of the behavior. Put this man on TV. It's Put Dan Housen on TV. Stuff. Give him lots of human monies. I've got so much Dan Housen stuff. It's I'm so mad. I've been looking for that for like two and a half, like a year. I've and got half. lots of. Da there's some Dan Housen stuff. I've got lots more. 
I don't know. Very nice but, human being, by the way. I met him at a yeah. Card Central Expo. Really good dude. I've, I've never met him. I've had some back and forth with him on Twitter. But, yeah, A-plus human being, A-plus character. I'm not usually a fan of, like, the joke wrestlers or the, the comedy wrestlers. But big ups to Dan Housen, man. He is one of, the great. Best, one of the best things in wrestling. He's uh he's been able to make like a character like you'd see in the '90s not be cringe, and uh, yeah, one of the only people to be able to do it in my book. Um, they tried so, that in uh, the early '80s. I don't know if you remember the wrestler called Phantasma. Good. Oh God, yeah, Phantasma yep. was awful. Uh, it was like didn't, a fake didn't you, and it would like pull he, like he had he had he had one match, and uh, Bruce Pritchard talks about how um he was like setting up before the hit before the thing and he like threw a fireball or whatever but like whatever the whatever the mm -hmm. liquid is that like when you when you spill it excuse me when you when you spill it, it um i don't th i don't think it was napalm was it was it napalm uh i know they used flash paper okay like yeah I, like he he had he had something that was like but, but yeah basically he was like gonna throw a fireball and there was something that he was messing with in the gorilla position and it, i guess he like spilled it and it like almost burned the gorilla position down and like bruce Pritchard, that's basically all that he had to say about it he's just like yeah like this guy's yeah it, it sounded like his run was over before he even got out of the curtain but and then it sounded like the match was kind of the shits so uh phantasmo and uh friar ferguson will ever be forever uh one match wonders but um yeah so uh did, ready to move on yep Okay, um, so Bailey comes out, um, talks about, uh, you know, her schmoz the last week with damage control, um, and, uh, you know, plays up the storyline, like, um, you know, my friends turned on me, like, I was the odd person out, um, you know, things like that. Uh, Dakota Kai comes out, interrupts her, and says, like, I've been trying to text you for weeks, or, or since last week, um, Bailey assumes that she's with damage control, you know, says like, well, whose side are you on? And Dakota Kai, uh, you know, calls her on the carpet, says like, well, I've heard them talking about me. You, you did nothing. Like, how do you justify that? Dakota Kai says, well, I thought your plan was working. Like, you know, EO is the, the women's champion. Kabuki Warriors were the tag team champions. You won the Royal Rumble. Like, I thought everything was falling into place. So I thought we would just figure this out. Um, the rest of Damage Control's music hits. Uh, Dakota Kai leaves the ring. Bailey standing in there by herself, um, about to get jumped uh, in a similar fashion to how the Shield used to, uh, you know, jump in on people. Um, as that's about to happen, Dakota Kai runs in with a chair. It looks like she's about to hit Bailey. She swings at all the other members of uh, Damage Control, other than Bailey and. Um, yeah, so it looks like she is on Team Bailey. Yeah, I thought this I was a great, a great addition to the story. Um, I genuinely don't think that uh, this was never, like, this was always the plan for this story. Because um, I felt like Bailey and Dakota were both the outcast of damage control, really. Um, so, sure. It's kind of good to see them. Now, I mean, they're still outnumbered three to too but yep you know um maybe that's where charlotte fits in i don't Good. know um Good. but yeah i don't have much to say other than it was it was good you know yep. it, was, it was it was fine it, i think i think it i think it made sense you know yeah. it like it was it was probably predictable but it you know it it made sense and that's okay. Not everything has to be a Vince Russo swerve, you know. Which is not not something we're used to WWE doing is actually booking to make fucking sense. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, exactly. It's a little it's a little bit of a shocker that they're actually going in a, a direction that makes fucking sense for once. So. I I agree entirely. Um, Bobby Lashley, the Street Profits, and BFAB cut a promo on the Final Testament. Uh, this this doesn't really do much for me one way or another. This is uh, all kind of there. It's yeah. awful. It's trash. Uh, yeah. I love the Street Profits, and I love the fact that they're with Bobby Lashley. Um, I know we didn't talk about NXT, but I do want to do that next week, so I'm going to be doing some notes on NXT for next week. Um, bring Carmelo Hayes up and put him with Bobby. 
and the Street Profits. Yep. Please. I... Good God, especially with him turning on Trick this past couple weeks ago. Put him with Bobby, man, and just yeah. strap a rocket to that man because yeah. he's the yeah. best thing in NXT. Uh, but, yeah, if they don't do that, I'm, I don't care. Like, then I'll I be think, insulted, but. I think, I think Carm- – Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I, I'm – I'm sorry, I didn't let you finish your thought. Go ahead. But um, I think the addition of BFAB was just she's on the roster and she's a black woman. I hate to put it that way, but let's get a black woman in that faction and just put her in there. I think that's what it was, you know? So. De- definite possibility. Um, yeah, I I think uh, I think Carmelo will get called up sooner than later. I mean, you know, his uh, his wife is – one of the biggest women stars, which I think, you know, probably earns you some, uh, some extra credit, I think like with the booking yeah. committee, um, you know, and then, uh, you know, they're, they're pushing pretty hard that, uh, love and that love and WWE. I think that's what the show is called. Yeah. Montez with, uh, with, love with yep, WWE. Yep. So I, yeah, I, I think sooner than later, you know, um, and, and Montez was, uh, he was in the rumble, wasn't he? I think he was like the one person that Finn Balor threw out. Yeah, Carmelo. Yeah, he was in the Rumble. Yep. Or, or sorry, sorry, I'm I'm conflating. Uh, uh, yeah, Montez and Carmelo. Montez yeah. and Carmelo, which is yeah, understandable. yeah. Yeah. So, so B- Bianca's married to Montez, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. My my That's bad. I had a look on my face, like my yeah, my my bad on that. <laughs> um. Uh. Okay. So. Uh. Next up, British Strong Style, which is. Uh, Pete Dunay, as you call him, and Tyler yes, Bate versus uh, Johnny Gargano and Tomasa Ciampa, formerly known as DIY. Uh, British Strong Style goes over via pinfall. Best um, match of the night. I, I agree. Um, Dunay are done. Uh, hit Gargano with the bitter end. Um, Dunn and Bate will challenge Judgment Day for the undisputed tag team titles at Elimination Chamber. And that's so, going to be a loop banger. That that will be a banger. I do think that Judgment Day probably retains going into WrestleMania, but I yeah, I would say because I like we said earlier, I think I think they dropped the titles to Awesome Truth at Mania. So I think so. Um, you know, I, I so. thought I thought this was a great showcase of what both teams can do when they're given time because they were the were they were they the main event? No, they weren't the main event. They were like second to last, right? They uh, they were yeah they were not. They were co-main event, so they were given enough time, and it it stole the show. Tyler yeah. Bate is one of the strongest human beings I've ever seen in my life. There was a spot in yeah. the match um, where he had one of them on his shoulders and the other one in a swing position. He was doing an airplane spin and like the Cesaro swing at the same time and it was one of the most impressive things I think I've ever okay. seen. Um, so I'm here for it. I can't wait for Elimination Chamber. I wasn't going to get up at 5 a.m. but now now I I'm, have to. I'm I'm I, I will I will watch it at a at a reasonable time, which is probably yeah, he, he's got that old man, you know, mobility and stuff. He's got he's gotta get his eight hours that's, rest. That's that's right, man. Yeah, there's not uh if if I'm getting up at five AM, like my house better be on fire. Yeah. Um <laughs> my the one uh the one thing I do have to throw in, uh I watched this match with my wife and she thought that Tyler Bates trunks look like tidy whities which I will uh I, I will I will say she's not wrong. Her wrestling they were, they were, are great, by the way. They were they were all white and they had like they had lines going down very similar to how tidy whiteies would. So yep, yep. Big big ups to my wife on that for that yeah, observation. I thought that was pretty good. Great. Right <laughs> uh, okay, next, um, Dominic Mysterio and Kevin Owens uh, had kind of a face off ahead of their elimination chamber qualifying match. That will be uh, next week. I think, right? Because that, yeah. that match didn't happen. I would hope yep. so. Yeah, so Dom, Dom and KO next week for uh, for the Elimination Chamber qualifier. Um, there was a spot at the end. I, I thought for uh, thought for an R-Truth spot, like this was not very good. But R-Truth was confused about um, something. Like he, he mistook Kevin Owens for somebody. I don't I don't remember who it was. But I like I thought for an R-Truth spot, like I thought it kind of fell flat. Yeah. I wasn't a big um, fan. And I love our truth, but there's sometimes you don't need truth. 
Yeah. Like, he's been there every week. And it's just like, it's to be expected now. So, to me, it was one of those things where he really fell flat this weekend. Um, I just thought it was kind of just there to be there. Yeah, uh, agreed. Agreed. Um, yeah, sometimes less is more. Um, so you're going to take if- issue with how I say this, but I'm literally reading it from CBSSports.com. Hmm. Logan Paul threw a tantrum to Aldis and Pierce over Are the, call the Elimination Chamber match. Aldis received, uh, revealed oh. he faced The Miz next week. Are Honestly, you man, I, I don't know. I Go ahead. I mean, I'll I'm, 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 de- I'm definitely I'm definitely biased against Logan Paul. Like he's like the, the things that I know him for, and I mean I'm I'm older than you, so like you you were probably more like in his fan base, like on his YouTube thing. But the things that I know him for is allegedly, allegedly for legal reasons, allegedly running a crypto scam, which go look at the CoffeeZilla video. It's look at it and see if you still feel the same way about Logan Paul. And the suicide forest video i mean granted like people tend to like focus like the negative things tend to tend to come to the surface more but like logan paul is a hell of an athlete like he's an okay promo and he's coming from the outside world which like makes what he does even more impressive but like i just feel like he's he's very vanilla for me and i'm just not i'm just not about it like i don't i don't hate him but i'm also like he's he's not the goat and you should apologize for saying as much but first, I'll, all, I'll give, I'll, I'll give, I'll give you, I'll give you this time to apologize to everybody for your ignorance. Ladies and gentlemen, Paul. as the advocate of the Goat Association for Logan Paul, I want to say that the comments on that, you know, post that he threw a tantrum, it's not his fault that his general manager, quote unquote, who can't do his job correctly, doesn't take time to prioritize his biggest star on his roster, the United States champion, who is. Elevated that title. Dan Housen is the biggest star. Dan Housen is not on the roster, sadly. But, sadly. first of all, Logan Paul is a fantastic performer. Um, people that hate on Logan Paul, I understand with all crypto stuff. I did watch his video, and I'm a little, I'm a little, that video you just said, like, I'm a little like, oh, man, why you got to do that? But as a natural heel, I got to support my boy and support the heel that he is building for himself because – the fact that this kid went from just being a YouTuber to now being a WWE United States champion, you'll never see it again. And Probably he's not. phenomenal. He is phenomenal. He had one of the best matches of the year in 2023 or two, three, um, with the Roman Reigns at Crown Jewel. Just phenomenal. Like, I, I can't praise this dude enough for his body of work. And I understand why people don't like him. But me, I'm strictly looking at it from a performer and professional wrestling aspect because that's the way we have to look at it. And I think he's doing a phenomenal job. He, I think, I think we can agree he's a he's a much better performer than he is a human being. I will, yeah, I will give you yeah, that. Yeah, we'll agree with that. I'll, I'll, I'll even give you that. that yeah, I will. I will give you that. Thing. Yeah, I'll say that. Um, let's see. So. I think, uh, I, I think, I, I think, I think the last thing is uh, the main event, right? Yeah, this should be our closing statement. Okay. Uh, so, lastly, uh, Randy Orton faced Sami Zayn in an Elimination Chamber qualifying match. Uh, Randy Orton uh, caught Zayn with an RKO. Um, it was competitive back and forth between fan favorites. Um, Zane leaned more on agility while Orton focused more on power. Orton jacked as hell after coming back from uh, from missing time. Um, there was a exciting spot where Orton threw Zane into the barricade, only for Zane to hop up and retaliate with a, a side moonsault. Um, Zane nearly secured the win with a uh, blue thunder bomb late in the match. Orton kicked out. The final sequence in the match saw Orton dug uh, duck dug. <laughs> Duck. duck between duck between Zane's legs mid springboard and surprise him with an RKO. Um, McIntyre and Orton faced off after the match. Um, so obviously Randy Orton to beat Sami Zayn and moves on into the elimination chamber match. Um, so at, so at this point we have uh, Orton and uh, Drew McIntyre confirmed for the match. 
with uh, Sami Zayn and AJ Styles uh, eliminated from contention. So shaping up to be pretty exciting in my book. Uh, CBS Sports, this is the only match on the card they graded. They gave it an A-. minus. I would I would say that's about right. To me, it was a. It could have been. Um, to me, I'm gonna. I'm gonna say it. I think DIY versus uh, Mustache Mountain um, should have made a British. British strong style is the is the oh, official okay. name. Okay. Mustache Wait, Mountain. I'm thinking of Trent Seven. Okay. British, <laughs> oh, sorry, Trent Seven. I'm. I'm sorry about that. Um, gosh, where did Trent Seven come out of? Um, but. Uh, to me, I don't think this should have been invented. I know that it had implications that is big, but it was a really good match. I thought the inter- the uh, RKO at the end was probably one of the best of his career. Um, it was very like, oh, that was cool, um, which yep. tends to be Randy's thing. Um, so overall, I give I give it about a B. You know, I wouldn't say it's okay. like an A. I'd give it about a B, B plus. Yeah, I, I would. I'd be in on like B plus, A minus. Yeah, like it, it didn't like like a month from now, like I'll probably barely remember it. But yeah, for, for what for what it was, I, yeah, I thought top to bottom the show was pretty decent. Yeah, um, you know, I thought the they, overall I, show was like a eight out of ten. You know, it was pretty good. Yeah, yeah, I thought they did a good job, like advancing the storyline with damage control. Um, they did what they needed to do on uh, getting um, British Strong Style established for their Elimination Chamber tag match. Um, they did some foreshadowing with, uh, you know, the upcoming elimination chamber matches. Um, I, I thought for, for me, for me, I thought the, I thought the, the best thing of the night was, um, just the storytelling between LA Knight and AJ Styles in the match between McIntyre and Styles. I thought the, the spot where, uh, LA Knight set up the water on the table to tip over and pour onto AJ Styles and them getting getting hot about it like i thought that was uh thought that was the best storytelling in the night in my book yeah and and you know that's fair enough everybody this is a great thing about wrestling and i want i want to close this on my closing statement nobody has to agree you can all love different things and that's the beautiful thing about wrestling is sure. there's something for everybody i mean we didn't even know each other up up until three weeks you know a couple weeks ago and yep we have very similar opinions when it comes to wrestling, but we also have very opposite opinions, but here we are doing a podcast. And uh, yep. that's the beautiful thing about wrestling. And the beautiful thing about friendship is you don't have to agree. So um, take that with a grain of salt. If you disagree with somebody, just happily disagree and uh, give your arguments. Cause that's what wrestling is about, man is about um, enjoying what you enjoy and uh, having fun with it. And I feel like this day and age, a lot of wrestling fans, especially internet marks, on Twitter, forget about that. I I agree entirely, and just like in real life, you never know when uh you never know which baby face is turning heel, and you never know which heel is turning baby face. So, I try to be a baby face in real life. I got uh, this pimple right here is turning heel on my face, so hopefully that's uh written off the script next week, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Time, time will tell. Hopefully, no long-term storytelling for that guy. Yeah, no, no long-term storytelling for the gigantic pimple. That's right, man. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, uh, we went way over time than I think we were intending, but that's the great thing about it is, yeah. you know, this is good because we just lost track of time. Um, thank Absolutely. you guys so much for watching. Uh, this will be a weekly thing. It will be posted over on my Facebook. I don't know if he's going to promote it or do anything to promote it, but it'll be posted on my Facebook, the Brotherhood Entertainment YouTube channel. Um, and I'm going to be posting clips from the stream on my TikTok and Twitch. So be sure to tune in there. Uh, we stream pretty much every week that there's wrestling, every day that there's wrestling we're on, other than NXT because, man, I'll be honest with y'all, it's kind of hard to sit through other than Carmelo Hayes and the thing he's got going. But, I just want to say thank you guys for watching, and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day, and uh, we'll catch you guys next week. Thank you, guys. Peace.